Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the task tracking philosophy of ESA Redmine and how to configure the workflow according to your needs. So let's start on the task detail. As you can see here, we are on a particular project. Now we'll focus on three most important attributes, assignee, tracker and status. So let's start with the tracker. You can configure the trackers in the administration. So just go to more, administration and trackers. Here you can see a list of trackers. These are basically the types of work that is done in a company. In our case, it is IT administration, design and so on. And if we open the tracker, we see some more settings. It is very important that trackers can be assigned to particular projects. So if you don't need this particular tracker in the help desk project, you can simply turn it off. There are various other settings that are explained in a different video, so we won't cover them. So these were trackers. And now let's focus on statuses. The configuration of statuses is also in the administration, just under trackers. Statuses help you define workflow. The most important feature of a status is whether it closes the task or not. You can see that these statuses don't have any parameter. That means that if a task is in one of these statuses, it is still opened. If a task is done or cancelled, according to these settings, it is closed. So these were task statuses and their configuration. Now let's look at the third attribute, which is assignee. An assignee has to be a user who is a member of the project. Project members are listed and configurable in the project settings. Here you can see a list of project members and their roles. If you want to add a project member, just select the user, assign the role and click add. To configure the roles, just go to administration. Here you are able to define new roles and assign permissions to them. Now let's go back to the task detail. We have a task that is assigned to Lucas, who is in the role of an IT expert. The tracker is feature programming and the status is new. And now let's have a look at how all this is interconnected. Go back to the administration and select workflow. Here you can define the behavior or permissions for each role and each tracker. We can choose the role and the tracker. And then just click this button to edit the workflow. Now let's make a sample setting. The task was in the new status, so this is the current status. And now we'll set whether a role of an IT expert can move the task into another status. If the status is new, he can move it to realization, which means he starts working in our case, and he can consult the task. And that's all for now. So this way we can define the workflow for any role and any tracker. Meaning we can set which roles can close the task and which roles cannot close the task. Now I've made some settings, so let's go through them. We can see that the role of an IT expert cannot put the task into the new status. That means that when the worker receives the task, he has to start working on it. And he also cannot put the task into the done and cancel status, so he can't close it. However, there are other possibilities. We can define that if the user is the author of the task, he can have additional permissions, so he can actually close the task. This means that if a user is the author of the task, he can put the task, which is in any status, into the done status. That means that a user works according to this workflow, and if he's also the author of the task, he can have some additional permissions. So this is how you configure the workflow. If you have a lot of roles and a lot of trackers, it might be time demanding to set it all individually. Therefore, we have the copy button, so you can copy the workflow and apply it on different trackers and different roles, and then perhaps make some minor changes. And one more important thing, if you create a new task status, it will not be assigned to any tracker or any role, so you will need to configure it in the workflow setting. Now we have saved the settings, and we'll have a look at it from the worker's perspective. Here is a task, and if I update it, I can see the task statuses I have permissions to. In our case, it's realization and consultation. But the status transitions are just one part of the workflow. Let's look at the task detail again. Here you can see the other attributes, such as start date, due date, the author, estimated time, and so on. Working with these attributes can also be configured in the workflow and according to the tracker. We'll take a look at the tracker's administration and a tracker called feature programming. Here we can see the standard fields visible on the tracker and also some custom fields which you can manually create and assign to the tracker. So you can see that these standard fields correlate with the fields you can see in the task detail. 
And to configure the workflow in terms of the fields, just go to Workflow and the second tab called Field Permissions. Then choose the role and the tracker, and here you can choose whether the field is read-only or required. So, for example, if we want our users to keep the due date, we'll just set it to required. And don't forget that this setting applies to the new task status only. So, every time a task is assigned to a user with a role IT expert, the due date will be required and the user cannot leave it blank. So, save the settings and let's take a look at it from the worker's perspective. We're logged in as Lukash, and when we update the task, we see that the due date is marked as required and therefore is read. That means that it must not be empty. If we try to save it with an empty due date, we'll get an error message saying that due date can't be blank. And again, these settings can be copied, so you don't have to do it all from scratch. So, this is the workflow philosophy of EasyRedMine, and I hope it will help you set your projects effectively. Thank you for watching.